Here's a question for you. When you pick your seat at church or the movies, do you require a buffer zone? You know what I'm talking about. Leaving at least a seat or two between you and the stranger closest to you at whatever event you're at, whether it's on the subway, the bus. A-plus panelist Allison Young was talking about this recently, and we figured it would be an interesting discussion to have right here. So let's bring in our A-plus panel. Allison Young is here, Republican strategist. Always good to see you, Allison. Thanks, Bill. Garland Nixon is here, radio talk show host. Good to see you, Garland. Great to be back. And joining our A-plus panel, our friend of the show, Dr. Jeffrey Gardier. Good to see you, Doc. Always great to be with you. Let me just say, full disclosure, I am a buffer zone guy. <laughs> I think one is not enough. I think you need two or three spaces between you and the next person. I believe that about you. Okay. My issue with this is this is a weird American thing. This does not exist anywhere else in the world. If you've traveled abroad or if you lived abroad like I have, people sit next to you. They talk to you next to you on the bus, in church, wherever you go. The space issue is a thing that is uniquely us. I'm curious what the doc has to say about it. Doc, let me ask you. I, you know, I, I'm a buffer guy. I've traveled to a lot of different countries. What Alice is saying is true. You know, from Costa Rica to Italy, they literally sit right next to you. And I'm like, do I know you? Yeah, I, I think it's certainly a cultural thing. And Allison is right about that. Uh, here in America, we really like the route to Rome. I think it's been uh, built into our DNA at this point. So I think we need to turn this upside down and do it the right way, maybe the way the Europeans and others are doing it. Well, see, I'm looking at this from the other, the other side of the other side of this discussion. I'm the person that talks to strangers, so I'm the one you actually want to buffer zone from because I sit <laughs> next to somebody and I run off at the mouth, so I'm the guy you're like, oh, God, I got to get over here away from this guy. Now, I have found that. Now, tell me, am I alone in this when you're sitting on a plane and your seat is open next to you and you see the rows start to fill in? Come on, tell me I'm the only one that sees that person coming down saying, don't sit next to me. Let the seat stay open, please. Close Let the, the door. Seat. And Close I, the and door. I'm, that, I'm that guy. I'm that guy you see walking down the aisle like, aisle, like talking to other people, and you're like, please not here. Doc, is it a problem? I put headphones in, and I pretend I'm listening to something, even if I'm not. Well, you know, at, at this point, I think a lot of us really need to check out a little bit, but I don't think that we should do it at the peril of others. But I think what you're doing is absolutely fine, though at times it can be very rude, and we should be more accommodating to our neighbors. So Allison, to that point, let's take it back to church, right? Yeah, you know, to me, a... you're focused in paying attention to church or you should be. So other than having that screaming kid next to you, which I also don't mind, I'm glad they're there. Uh, I, I feel like, like in other cultures, they line up. You know, I was telling the story about Costa Rica. They literally line up, pack them in. You go to mass here, you, you space it out. That's a real conundrum, especially when the churches are crowded at Christmas time. Right. The rest of us that are there all year long get our own pew. We're in the pew every day, every week where we go to the same spot. And then when people start crowding in on the pew on Christmas Eve, you know that everybody's looking around going, I'm not feeling very Christian tonight. <laughs> Stand in the back. It's fine. All right, guys. Thank you. Merry Christmas.